morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist for the, third, the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And we especially welcome any visitors uh, joining us in spiritual communion today. Our celebrant for today's Mass is our pastor, Father Jeffrey Walter. If you are a newcomer or if you've been, you've been attending Mass and have not registered yet with our parish, uh, registration forms are available in the Information Center in the atrium and can be filled out and dropped in the collection basket or turned into the parish office. At this time, please silence all electronic devices so that we may pray without interruption. Loaves and Fishes fundraiser is this Thursday, October 29th. Tickets are available at the church office and you can see the bulletin for more details. Knights of Columbus is sponsoring a blood drive on November 15th from 8 a.m. to 12.30 in the Activity Center. Please see the bulletin for more information. And confirmation class for 10th, 11th, and 12th grades will begin next Sunday, November 1st at 4.30 p.m. in the Activity Center. The law and the prophets depend on the commandment of love. Commanded by love, we come to serve the Lord in all things. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic adoration and celebration. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. And good morning, everyone. It's great, as always, to see everyone this morning, most especially for our visitors and also for those parishioners who is, this is their first weekend to come back and be with us at a public Mass. So it's great to have you all back with us also as we together celebrate this 30th week of Ordinary Time as we and those who are gathering with us on the video um, to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Today we hear about the very core, the very heart of who we are and what we are called to be about. So as we come to be open to the Lord's grace, let us pause as we prepare ourselves to be open to God's gracious gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you deliver us from the very power of evil. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the great commandment of love. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the eternal sign of love of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of all of our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A 
A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among, any, among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner towards him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the, to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers, in Ma all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception you had, um, we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today in the Gospel reading in that 22nd chapter of Matthew's Gospel, as I said in the, math, the beginning, Matthew is getting, or Jesus is getting at the very heart, he's getting at the very core of what it means to be able to do the will of God. And it narrows it down to two commandments. But before we get into those two commandments, I think it's, it's important to back up and to realize the setting that was taking place because Jesus was, go, Jesus was there. He's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. They disperse. And then a scholar of the law, or they would say a lawyer, if you go back and look at the Hebrew and the Greek words, it's basically a biblical scholar. So it'd be a Jewish biblical scholar was the was the lawyer that came to address Jesus. And he would have been one that would be immersed in those first five books of the Old Testament. He would have known Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Number and Deuteronomy from back to back, you know. And he knows, as they all Jews know, that there's 16, 613 laws that you're, all Jews are supposed to follow. And so this lawyer goes up to Jesus and he says, well, Jesus, what is the greatest of all the laws? Well, if we were there at that time, it probably would have been a hush over the whole room because everybody had known exactly how he was trying to trip Jesus up. And we heard in that gospel reading, Jesus didn't miss a beat. And where most people would have thought he had gone back to Exodus chapter 20 to the Ten Commandments and said the first commandment, that you shall not have any false gods against me, that that would be the first commandment, the biggest law that there would be. That would be the, the common thing to respond. But no, Jesus goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 6, what is called the Shema in the Jewish tradition, or it's called, it translates to hear or to listen. And every good, faithful Jew during Jesus' time would have said Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 through 6, three times a day to just constantly focus themselves that they're supposed to give everything to God. And so three times a day, every faithful Jew would have said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all your might. See, the Shema for the Jews, if you want to look at it, it's kind of like the Our Father is to us. You know, everybody just kind of goes and fires off the Our Father. Well, the Jews would be able to fire off the Shema. And the idea is that, the, and so Jesus is pushing um, us all to remember that the first commandment is a total love for God with everything we have and with everything we're about. If you want to get down to the basics of what we are called to do and to be about, everything we should do should be to, to show love and respect to God. Now, if we go back in some of the old ancient texts, 
There's an old ancient text that it's about from the third to the fifth century around that time, and it tells a story about this famous rabbi. This famous rabbi was captured by the Romans and was being tortured and was going to be killed. And this famous rabbi, as he stretched out there, and, and they were like pulling his skin off, so they were just raking this rake thing over him, just a horrible, horrible death. And the story goes that as they were about to start the torture, that the famous rabbi started saying the Shema. He started saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your... So as he's saying it, his followers are saying, Why are you saying the Shema right now? And the story goes that he said, I have struggled all of my life trying to figure out what it means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And now I realize what that means. And so then he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And he just kept saying, One Lord, one Lord, one Lord, as they took his life. What does it mean to give everything our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul to the Lord. We hear in that responsorial psalm from Psalm 18, the first refrain was, I love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge. An example of what it means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And then Jesus says the second is also the greatest of the commandments. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there Jesus is turning to, and the scribe would have known that he was going back to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Where in the book of Leviticus it says, You shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against your sons or daughters, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is reaching again back to what's familiar to them and saying, You gotta love God, but you also need to love your neighbor. And in that first reading, we hear an example of what it means to love our neighbor. In that book of Exodus, chapter 22, where we're reminded that we've got to love those that we care for, but we also need to love those who are most vulnerable. So the poor, the widows, the orphans, the immigrants, that we've got to be, show that love our neighbor is also those who are most vulnerable. So Jesus' second law is we've got to love also those who are around us. And why this is ingenious is because Jesus went in saying the two greatest commandments, if you go back to the Ten Commandments, if you look back and you, when Moses was coming down the mountain with the Ten Commandments, what, did it, what does the Scripture say he had? He had two tablets on one tablet was three commandments and what was their focus if you think about the first three commandments is love of god and the other tablet had the other seven commandments on it was about what if you think about them it's about love of neighbor so jesus ingeniously was going back and saying it's always been there the very heart of who we are and the very core of what we're called to be about has always been there. And he's just highlighting what was all being foretold through the Old Testament. The very heart, the very essence of who we are and what we're about in doing the will of God is about charity. Charity, be charity to God and charity to one another. So Jesus, in dealing with a very tenseful situation in that gospel reading, that Ju the Jewish biblical scholar trying to, to trip him up, Jesus doesn't lose a bit. And he says, go back to the two most important things. 
The first priority is loving God with all that you have, with your whole heart, your whole mind and your soul. He didn't say part of your heart, part of your mind, part of your soul. It's with all of your mind, all of your heart, and with all of your soul. And he doesn't suggest. He says we must love our neighbor, those most vulnerable, as we love ourselves. It took the rabbi getting it as he gave his life. I think the question for us today is what will it take? What will it take this week for you to give all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul to the Lord? And what will it take this week to love your neighbor as yourself? Let us stand now, and in order to love is to be loved. And so let's celebrate the many ways that God loves and is present to us as we profess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. <clears throat> light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus taught, we come to God with confidence, bringing our concerns for the church and the world to our Lord. For pastoral leaders and preachers, for dedicated liturgists and educators, we pray. For patient peacemakers and negotiators, for compassionate leaders and honest lawmakers, we pray. For this gathered assembly, may the love and truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all that we do, we pray. For those who long for the equality of all persons, that their dedication to the unborn, to the old, the condemned, and the forgotten may grow every day, we pray. For the members of this assembly, for all their loved ones who have died, especially for Sarah Clark, we pray. For Annunciation Catholic School students, faculty, and staff, and all schools represented here today, that the Holy Spirit will help us grow in our understanding of the world around us and grant us the strength to make right choices when the world challenges what is right and holy. We pray. 
We also pray for all of those who still do not feel comfortable coming back to public masses or those who are unable to come, and we just remember them in a special way. Today, in our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living in true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Lord, help us to embrace, to serve, and to inspire. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And with humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed, above all, to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May your sacraments, O oh Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, it's great to see everybody, our, especially our visitors that are with us today. And um, just uh, we are going to, we're very grateful for WCBI for helping us with these videos these past couple months. And we are um, having our own system installed in the next week or two. And so in doing that, we'll be able to have it live. So it'll be on YouTube live at the 1030 Mass, but it'll also be pre-recorded for any of those who still want to watch us um, via the video with Celebrating Spiritual Communion. But with that, I need a con an operator, a controller, a mixer, controller, person. I don't know what you call them, but it is... Um, uh, it would be a very simple little mixer. We'll have it right back there, and we'll have two cameras there and one camera right up here, and you just kind of switch from one camera to the other when we make transitions. And, um, so you don't have to be a, a professional to do it, so, but we do hopefully going to have a team of people that will be able to do it so not one person has to do every single Mass. Um, every single Sunday, but we're going to need that in the next couple of weeks. So if you're like a computer techie or you kind of have a passion for videos or editing videos, um, you are the person I'm looking for. So if you don't volunteer, I will find you. OK, so no. But hopefully if you know where anybody or anybody watching the video knows of anybody, if you could please let me know in the next week or two, we'd be most grateful so we can be able to start having this um, live rather than happen to have time where we have to upload it. So it's a big honor and privilege to be doing this um, since March. You could not have forced me to do this before, but hey, now I just do it like it's nothing. So it's, um, it's just uh, another way that we're called, uh, you know, to love the Lord with all of our heart and our soul and our neighbor as ourselves. This is a perfect example. So hopefully we can have a group of people and volunteers that will volunteer to help us out with the um, controlling of the live video. I want to remind you as we leave to take your sheets with you as you leave and there's two baskets at the the doors where we put if people borrow one of our masks to put the their used mask in that bag you can also throw that sheet in there if you wouldn't mind um, at the end of mass and just want to remind everybody our visitors and also those who are coming back with us the way that we exit Mass is that as um, soon as the final hymn starts, I will walk out, and then these two sections will immediately start processing out from the outside rather than inside, but y'all leave from the outside, and after they have gotten out, then these two sides will leave also from the outside. Again, thank you for your cooperation, and just it's a huge blessing for us all, but also to keep us all safe. And lastly, I want to remind you, if you haven't um, given in the collection basket yet, the collection baskets are at the doorways as you leave. And for those who are joining us online, as always, you can give um, by just mailing into the office or bringing your offering to the office, or you can go to our parish website or our app and give online. Again, grateful to see everyone, and it's an honor and privilege to celebrate together as we all receive that grace of the Lord to be able to be ever more faithful this week and loving God with our all heart, our mind, our soul, and working in those ways we can love our neighbor as ourself. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go now and proclaim the gospel with our very lives. Thanks be to God.